everyone, welcome to Church Online. I'm CG and I'm so glad that you joined us for church today. I wanted to take just a minute to share with you how you guys have been for our community and for kids. First, you have been donating school supplies for Lisa Elementary for the parents and kids there. Also, Summit Kids have been handing out back to school boxes filled with resources for kids and for parents as they navigate what this weird school year might bring. Check it out.
here I don't want to be I won't be moved unless you move I want you more than the air I breathe I need you I need you if you're not here I don't want to be I won't be moved unless you move I Hey, it is so good to be with you today for Church Online. It's hard to believe, but we are now five, almost six months into a new reality. How do you feel? Are you crushing it during this time? Have you been crushed by it during this time? Or maybe you're like me, you're somewhere in the middle between crushing it and being crushed by it. Wherever you fall on that scale, we wanna be here to help. This week, we are starting a short new series called Rhythms Restart. Our routines make us who we are. This series is an opportunity to grow into some new habits that center us around Christ. It's an opportunity to restart and renew as summer comes to a close. So I'm so excited to begin and kick off this series this week. One more thing I wanna let you know about. Some of you have been asking if our auction event, Feed the Need, is still happening. The answer is yes, but in a new season, we have a new name and a new format. Feed the Need is becoming the big give. The Big Give is an opportunity for you to gather in your home, maybe with some friends, as we come together to raise funds to help others experience the love of Jesus in our city. The money that we raise here allows us to do so many incredible things like pay off debts, some of the medical debts, to fund our transitional home at Hillcrest, to meet unique needs as they arise, and so many more things. This year, there are two ways that you can be involved. One, you can buy one of the ticket options that we have available. Some really cool stuff involved with those options. So check those out. And two, you can donate specific items or unique experiences that we can auction off. And the cool thing about the event is any gift that you give, its value is multiplied at the auction. It, it's so cool. Make sure that you mark the date, October 16th. You can go to reachingthesummit.com slash big give to learn more. I really hope to see you there. It's going to be an amazing experience. Now, here's Pastor Jesse to lead us in a time of worship. Turn to 
for us. We just ask you to help us to abide in you, abide in your spirit that lives in us. And the colors of this world, the colors of this life that we have with you, be so vibrant, so alive. They're draw us close today.
you don't really have to listen long to someone playing drums to know if they have rhythm. It's one of those skills that's hard to fake. Clearly, I know my place. I definitely cannot play the drums, but you know what I can do? I can clap in rhythm. Have you ever been around someone who can't? You can't not notice. In fact, their lack of rhythm makes it harder for someone who barely has rhythm to keep on going. When we're out of sync, it's obvious to the people around us. This applies across several areas of our lives. When you don't sleep, you might look like this. When you don't study, perhaps this is what you end up with. And we all know what happens if you don't exercise. Maybe the best example is what happens when you don't shave. Okay, that wasn't a great example, but you get where I'm coming from, right? When you can't clap along with the beat, people notice. And I get where we are. The last six months have been a blur in so many ways. And yet in others, they seem to drag on forever. But the one thing we might share is this realization. Things aren't going back to the way they were anytime soon. That truth is so very important because so many of us have just been surviving since the pandemic began. We survived online school. We survived the lockdown. We survived when most restaurants were closed. That was harder than we expected, right? But we're currently surviving the beginning of a school year unlike any we've ever seen. At some point, the goal has to be more than simply surviving. It's time to be sure that our rhythms are helping us thrive. And people are doing this. Do you remember when you couldn't find toilet paper in stores anywhere? That was a sign of survival. Guess what's hard to find now? A small desk for a student to sit and complete their schoolwork. That's setting up for success. That's making a plan to thrive. Today, I wanna get really practical and make a case for you to develop some spiritual rhythms that will sustain you now and into the future. There are three reasons that establishing weekly and daily rhythms are important. And the first one is this. What you want most is worth working for. Now, here's just a word of warning. I'm going to make an assumption about you. And I think this assumption is probably true whether you're a follower of Jesus or not, whether you're old, married, single. My assumption is this, you have goals in your life. You probably have career goals and personal goals and maybe even family goals. And something that becomes apparent as you work towards your goals is that achieving your goals will cost you something. Each of the three reasons for a rhythm that I will share today comes from the book of Proverbs. Proverbs is a collection of wisdom found in the Old Testament. There are sayings and truisms that help us better understand the place we find ourselves. Take this for example. Remember, we need a rhythm because what you need most is worth working for. Consider the way the Proverbs say that. Whoever loves pleasure will be a poor man. He who loves wine and oil will not be rich. The writer of Proverbs is saying this, what you are working for, if it's wealth, will come at a cost. There's a sacrifice involved. To accumulate more, you must spend less. And the parallel, it becomes really clear. Making time and your routine for the development of your faith will cost you something. It will require work. It may mean getting up early, staying up late, shortening up your nightly Netflix binge. If your goal is spiritual fitness or spiritual vitality, it's worth achieving and it's worth working for. The second reason that establishing rhythms is important is this. Greatness is the result of a grind. Come on, you know this is true. Great things don't begin great. Greatness is the result of commitment, work, sacrifice. Why are the Olympics so compelling? Because we hear stories of athletes overcoming adversity, giving everything they have, all for the chance at success. The best part? about the Olympics is the stories that are told in the title package between the competitions. Magazine editors and bloggers have known the truth about this for so long. Think about the magazine titles that you see, seven ways to increase your strength and endurance, 20 ways to change your skin for good, 12 ways to improve your golf grip. And I gotta admit, when I read that, I thought if you need 12 improvements to your golf grip, you should find another hobby. Every email, every blog, it's five things or four things or three things to do to achieve success. Because if we just said to do it, it becomes overwhelming. Perhaps one of the best leadership books ever written is Jim Collins, Good to Great. 
It gives a framework for how to find greatness. The research that Collins provides speaks to the necessity of doing the right thing every single time to find success. The same principles apply to personal health and your honeydew list and leadership in your workplace. And they also apply to your spiritual life. Check this out. This is Proverbs chapter 30, verses 24 through 28. This is so interesting. There are four small creatures, wisest of the wise they are. Ants, frail as they are, get plenty of food for the winter. Marmots, vulnerable as they are, manage to arrange for rock solid homes. Locusts, leaderless insects, yet they strip the field like an army regiment. Lizards, easy enough to catch, but they sneak past vigilant palace guards. Ants, marmots, locusts, lizards, they aren't regularly featured on Nat Geo, but this proverb makes a powerful point. Those pesky little creatures, tiny and frail, survive the harshest weather because they hunker down with the food that they've stored away. The marmots, the locusts, the lizards, they don't survive because they're the best and the brightest. They thrive because they do the hard work to ensure their survival. I don't know about you, but when I think about getting my relationship with God back on the right track, when I think about being a follower of Jesus, when I'm reminded of the importance of becoming a true disciple, I can get overwhelmed. I don't even know where to start. And today, I'm going to share the number one can't fail, success is guaranteed thing that you can do to get your spiritual life back on track. Are you ready? Here it is. Do something, anything really. Why? The third reason that establishing a rhythm is vital for your spiritual life is this. Your direction determines your destination. The very first thing I do when I'm contemplating going somewhere new is to pull up the location in maps. It gives me such a good idea of where I'm headed. When I pull out of the driveway, when I leave my neighborhood, when I hit that first intersection, the direction I'm heading will determine where I end up. I'll go on record with this. I-70 is easily the most boring stretch of highway in the Midwest. That might be a little bit strong, but hang with me. When I get to I-70, whether I go east or west will determine if I end up in Indiana or Colorado. The direction I'm headed makes all the difference. The writer in Proverbs says it so eloquently. Proverbs eleven fourteen, Without good direction, people lose their way. The more wise counsel you follow, the better your chances. We're nearly six months into the coronavirus pandemic. It has created further divide in our country. It's underscored differences that we already knew we had. It has highlighted our insecurities, our struggles, our fears. And where we will end up when it's all said and done is entirely decided by which direction we're heading. So where are you headed? Are you standing in a spiritual valley or standing on the mountaintop? How are your disciplines? What is your prayer life like? Or maybe as John Wesley says it, how is it with your soul? The rhythms that we live by will either cause us to fail or succeed. That's true in every area of our lives. And it's especially true with our spiritual life. Jesus gives us a dose of wisdom for such a time as this. It's found in Matthew chapter 11. Perhaps these words of Jesus resonate in your heart today. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. You know, you can't just walk into a drum store like the one I'm standing in at 81st and Warnell, Explorers Percussion, and know how to play the drums. It takes work. It takes sacrifice. It takes effort. And when you don't have it, everyone around you knows. But when you're in rhythm, the beat of the drums can pull it all together, laying a foundation for every other instrument to build on, creating something amazing. It's time for a rhythms restart, to regroup, to recalibrate, to get headed in the right direction. And when we do, that's when we feel the unforced rhythms of grace. Let's take a moment to pray, and then I'm going to be back to share with you a few ways that you can live this out. Will you pray with me? God, we're grateful for the fact that you give us 
direction on how to find you and live with you and thrive in our relationship with you. God, help us to break out of a survival mentality and to find a way to thrive in our spiritual life. Help us find rhythms that build a foundation so that we can grow closer to you in everything that we do. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, this week we have a couple things that are coming. They're going to help you in this quest to develop spiritual rhythms. The first one is this. Sunday, you can join us in person for communion. It's going to be from 10 to 11.30 a.m. Our pastors will be there to greet you, to direct you, and to share communion with you. It's an incredible opportunity for us to worship and spend just a little bit of time together. And this week, make sure that you check out our YouTube channel on Tuesday and on Thursday. We have special content that's coming out to help you develop spiritual rhythms in your life. On Tuesday, Pastor Jesse is gonna be talking about the rhythm of worship and how you live a life of worship. And then on Thursday, Pastor Matt's gonna talk about how we develop our prayer life in such a way that it becomes a rhythm and an ongoing conversation with God. We're serious about helping you thrive in this time. We want to do everything we can. And we really believe that the number one way we can do that is to develop things in our lives that push us toward God, that direct our attention towards spiritual things, the things of heaven. And so we pray today that that's your desire and that's what you find as you live and as you follow Jesus. Have a great week.